Upon completion, the bridge will shorten the travel time between Zhuhai, Hong Kong and Macau remarkably. Such a grand project is just part of the government's efforts to improve transport infrastructure. China plans to invest a total of about $2.2 trillion during the 13th five-year plan period. That's meaning from 2016 to 2020. Now, a little over half of that money will be spent on building railways and nearly a quarter on highways. The rest will be focusing on airports and waterways. And high-speed rail, of course, is one of the priorities. China hopes to expand the network to cover over 80% of cities with a population of more than 1 million by the year 2020. Now, for more on China's push to build infrastructure, I'm joined by Yan Song, live from North Carolina. She's the director of the program on Chinese cities at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Welcome. Thank you, Rochelle. Thanks for having me. Now, let's start with the bridge project linking Hong Kong, Zhuhai, and Macau. How is this being financed? Uh, it's financed by uh, three associate governments in the region, uh, namely the uh, China mainland government, the Macau and Hong Kong Special Administrative Region government, but the remaining balance is financed by the uh, uh, procurement uh, consortium led by the China, uh, the Bank of China. And it's certainly an ambitious project. So what do you really see as the biggest economic benefits of this? The uh, biggest benefits, um, as you just mentioned, it shortens the travel time between Zhuhai and Hong Kong or between Guangxi province and Hong Kong from three hours to uh, only uh, 30 minutes. So the uh, economic opportunities brought by uh, this connection, uh, this trading route is huge. Now, what other projects does China have in the pipeline at this sort of scale? But there are lots, there are plenty of uh, mega uh, infrastructure projects at this scale in China. Uh, from highways that span the continent to an uh, enormously popular airport, China is really showing that it's, it's doing things, something really big. Um, one example I can give is the uh, Jiaozhou Bay Bridge, which is the uh, world's longest cross-sea bridge that stretches for uh, uh, 26 miles, which is almost the length of marathon, and the list can go on and on, but you got the picture. Now, certainly a lot of projects in the pipeline. So what are some of the financing options being explored? You mentioned um, with the Hong Kong, Zhuhai, Macau Bridge that it's several governments contributing. Perhaps anything in terms of private-public partnership? What, what are we expecting? Um, I, I would say most of these pro projects, um, they are financed somewhat differently. But in a nutshell, China has financed its uh, projects mainly using the uh, the bank loans rather than the uh, private sector investments. Uh, I would mention two big categories of uh, financing schemes in China. The uh, first big category is the uh, pay-as-you-go fiscal revenue, with examples such as uh, the uh, budgetary allocations, urban maintenance and construction revenue, and uh, land um, transfer fees which is the most visible and debatable financial scheme in China in recent years. And the second biggest category is the uh, market financing approach, which um, have examples such as the uh, debt and equity financing. Uh, I do want to make two, um, make two quick points here. Uh, firstly, the, um, uh, China's debt financing scheme relies mostly on uh, uh, bank loans, only in recent years, some local governments have, been, uh, have began to issue the uh, municipal bonds. The uh, second point I want to mention is the, uh, um, the, uh, sort of the, uh, uh, the equity financing now uh, makes the form of uh, self-raised funds, such as uh, funds from uh, enterprises, from uh, public institutions, right. from uh, foreign capital, um, just as you mentioned, some investments from uh, public-private partnerships. Now, what about the One Belt, One Road initiative? How does this plan fit into all that? I think it really fits really well. Uh, the uh, belt, which is the physical road, and the uh, road is actually the uh, maritime Silk Road, um, connects the, um, the, the sort of the trading and the global um, shipping route from, that takes one from uh, China to even to uh, um, Northern Europe. And the uh, initiative has huge influences on infrastructure build out, not only within China, but in all the other countries along the Belt and Road. 
certainly connecting the whole world. Thank you so much. We'll have to leave it there. Yan Song, Director of the Program on Chinese Studies at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill.